Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel, Jurassic Collector here. Today we are going to be taking a look at the top 10 dinosaurs that need to be in Jurassic World 3. So quickly, I just want to talk about my top, um, if you like it, um, it's so cool, I love it, it has like the Velociraptor symbol. So if you do want to check this out and get it for yourself, there will be a link in the description, it is Zabby's new Jurassic Park range, it just launched, um, so there will be links in the description to check it out. If you are already subscribed, make sure to do so down below. So I made a list of um, different species that I would like to see and I narrowed it down to 10, so let's take a look at the top 10 dinosaurs that need to be in Jurassic World 3. So, number 10 on my list would have to be Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus was a medium-sized carnivore that lived in the late Jurassic period. Ceratosaurus was successfully recreated by InGen in the Embryonics Administration Lab on Isla Sorna. The only known Ceratosaurus was parented and fed in captivity until InGen abandoned the lab and released it into the wild. So this is just a little backstory on Ceratosaurus in the Jurassic franchise in previous movies. So the only time Ceratosaurus has been actually physically seen in the Jurassic movies was obviously in Jurassic Park 3 with the river scene um, and then Ceratosaurus, or also known as the poop dinosaur, comes up to Alan Grant and the rest of the um, characters when they were digging through the Spinosaurus poop to find the um, satellite phone, they could hear it ringing and the Ceratosaurus came up to them and we thought it was going to attack them and eat them but because of the poop it just walked away and left. So that was the only time we actually got to see Ceratosaurus in any Jurassic movie. So that was obviously the end of the Jurassic Park trilogy so I feel like to end the Jurassic World trilogy and potentially the last Jurassic movie in the entire franchise it would be awesome to have Ceratosaurus in Jurassic World 3. Next up on my list is Microceratus and Microceratus is a genus of small ceratopsian dinosaur that lived in the Cretaceous period in Asia. They were actually in Jurassic Park the novel and in the novel they're actually under their old name of Microceratops. So now they're known as Microceratus. Microceratus was actually successfully recreated by InGen for Jurassic World. It lived in the Cretaceous cruise. We've never actually physically seen Microceratus in any Jurassic movie as of yet. So hopefully for Jurassic World 3 it will be included. Microceratus was actually supposed to be in Jurassic World. It was planned in the storyboards to be in the Gentle Giants Pet and Zoo. But unfortunately that was cut from the movie and it didn't actually make it. Microceratus is actually one of Colin Trevorrow's favorite dinosaurs. So consider the theme of Jurassic World 3 with dinosaurs roaming around with people and um, could we actually see Microceratus in the um, world with humans where dinosaurs and humans have to coexist and could we see maybe people having Microceratus as pets in the next movie who knows hopefully we will though see Microceratus in Jurassic World 3. Number eight on my list would have to be Edmontosaurus because Edmontosaurus is such an awesome awesome part before it looks so so cool. Edmontosaurus could walk on both um, all fours or on its two hind legs as well and it was about 10 feet tall and 39 to 43 foot long. Edmontosaurus was actually created on Isla Sorna for the original park which is Jurassic Park. Four of them on Isla Sorna were actually released into the wild when Hurricane Clarissa struck. It's unknown what happened to those individuals because none of them were obviously seen in the lost world so we don't actually know what happened to them. Edmontosaurus was actually created by InGen for Mizrani Global Corporation's new dinosaur park that we know as Jurassic World. The Edmontosaurus on the Jurassic World website didn't have the fleshy comb on its head like one of the original species Edmontosaurus. Edmontosaurus regardless of In the movie, Edmontosaurus supposedly lived in Gallimimus Valley in Jurassic World, but obviously we didn't actually get to see it um, in Jurassic World, which is a shame because I would have loved to see it. In Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, there was a skeleton of Edmontosaurus seen in Lockwood Manor. We've never actually properly seen a live Edmontosaurus in the Jurassic films, and considering Jurassic World Tree or Jurassic World Dominion is potentially the last Jurassic movie in the franchise. It's just, it's our last shot to get Edmontosaurus and I think it really, really should be done. Number seven on my list is Suchomimus. So the first Spinosaurid I would like to see in Jurassic World 3 is Suchomimus. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see what other Spinosaurid I pick. Suchomimus was similar to Baryonyx. 
but I feel like Sukumimus would be such an awesome addition to the Jurassic franchise because you could I can just imagine for Jurassic World 3 a super dark and sinister war scene with Sukumimus. It could have like a really similar color scheme to Jurassic World website and I think that looks so cool so I would love to see that. Sukumimus was in the Cretaceous Cruise at Jurassic World apparently but we unfortunately never got to actually see it in the movie. But there could be a really really cool scene where it's really dark out or something or it's overcast day and the, there's a water scene and there's Sukumimus involved with a boat or something. I would absolutely love to see something like that because dinosaurs and humans have to coexist so Sukumimus would be an awesome addition to the Jurassic World 3 species roster. And for number 6 I would love to see Styracosaurus in Jurassic World 3. I know for a fact that Styracosaurus is a species that not only me but so many other fans would love to see in Jurassic World 3. It's obviously never been actually in a Jurassic World film at all before so it would be so cool to have it in the flesh well, obviously not real, but in the movie, it's a beautifully interesting looking short frilled ceratops. It has six big horns on its frill and it had a massive horn on its nose. This made it so unique looking and it looked so awesome because of all of these horns on its head. It looks so much different than like your triceratops or anything like that. It also was significantly smaller than Triceratops. I don't think confusion would be a problem among kids or fans. Styracosaurus was 5.5 meters or 18 feet and Triceratops was 9 meters or 30 feet. So we never actually have got to see Styracosaurus at all in any Jurassic movie. So I feel like Jurassic World 3 is the perfect chance to give us Styracosaurus for the last and final potential installment in the Jurassic franchise. And number five would be Therensinosaurus. Therensinosaurus, I think that's how you pronounce it, but this would be an absolute incredible addition to the Jurassic franchise because it's such an interesting, unique looking dinosaur. Like it really is. It just looks so much different than any other dinosaur we've ever seen in Jurassic movie. This could also be our first chance to have a fully better dinosaur in the Jurassic franchise because there's a lot of depictions of the Renzinosaurus that the species is actually feathered but it could be our first chance to get a fully feathered species in the Jurassic franchise. Most Renzinosaurus stood on their back legs and they had white hips and feathers. Therensinosaurus stood about 5 meters tall and it was about 10 meters long. One fun fact about Therensinosaurus, it wasn't actually physically in any Jurassic movie as I said but its DNA was used as part of the Indominus Rex. <laughs> Indominus Rex was obviously in the first movie of the Jurassic World franchise. So to finish the Jurassic World franchise, I feel like by bringing the Tyrannosaurus, it's you know making a nod back to the DNA used for the Indominus Rex. And again, it just looks awesome. So that's why I think Tyrannosaurus should be in Jurassic World 3. And number four on my list would be Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is the second Spinosaurus I would like to see in Jurassic World 3. Obviously Spinosaurus was the main villain of Jurassic Park 3, though I, I don't want to see Spinosaurus return and have a fight with the T-Rex. That's not what I want. And I just want Spinosaurus to have its own scene in Jurassic World 3. Not a big scene, just like a small cameo maybe or something. I just want Spinosaurus to have its own scene, maybe a minute or two. Just have the Spinosaurus on its own, just doing its own thing or something I don't know but it would be cool just to have it back for the last Jurassic movie because in Jurassic World 3 like I said with the Sukumimus Spinosaurus could have a really cool underwater scene so maybe Sukumimus and Spinosaurus could be in the one scene fighting I don't know but I think it would be super awesome to have an underwater scene that would be a nod to Jurassic Park 3 because yes it's not the best movie in the franchise no it would still be a nod to Jurassic Park 3 for fans of that movie it would be a really cool scene I think. Spinosaurus was actually the biggest land-based carnivore found so far so it obviously was massive so obviously we did only see Spinosaurus once in the Jurassic franchise and that was in Jurassic Park 3 we haven't seen it since except in Jurassic World with the Spinosaurus Skeleton and Rexy broke through it. That was pretty cool, but we haven't actually seen Spinosaurus since Jurassic Park 3 in the flesh. So I feel like the last Jurassic Park movie had Spinosaurus to end the trilogy. So I feel like for Jurassic World 3, Spinosaurus shouldn't be in the entire movie, but it should just have a little small scene in Jurassic World 3, just as a nod back to Jurassic Park 3, in my opinion. Species number three that I want to see in Jurassic World 3 is Dimatron. Although it looked like a dinosaur, Dimatron was not, but I still think it could be an awesome, awesome addition to Jurassic World 3. Because it, guys, it looked so unique, it had a really cool sail, it was 
decently like low down to the ground and it just looks absolutely awesome. It hasn't obviously been in any Jurassic movies in the past, except for it had a little statue in Lockwood's Manor in a little diorama there. That looked really cool and I would love to see uh, her, like a couple of Dimatrodons in Jurassic World 3 in like a scene. I just think it would be the coolest thing. It had the tall sail on its back as I said and that was probably made of skin and muscle according to like paleontologists. So I really do want Dimatrodon to make its entrance into the actual Jurassic franchise in the movies for Jurassic World 3. It would be an awesome way to close out the series. Just just because as I said Dimatron is so unique and it looks so so awesome and it definitely does not get enough representation in the Jurassic franchise at all. It only has got a few toys and that's it. There's been no Dimatron in the movie so please for Jurassic World 3 we need a Dimatron. And number two on my list would have to be Plesiosaurus. You guys, Plesiosaurus was such an incredible marine reptile. It has never made an appearance in any Jurassic movie before, so it needs to come into the Jurassic franchise for Jurassic World 3. It had limbs that were like paddles and they propelled it through the water. They had a long neck with strong jaws and sharp teeth. Plesiosaurus, or it's also known as Nessie the Loch Ness Monster. If you believe in that, you know, the whole Loch Ness thing with Nessie the Loch Ness Monster, that is a Plesiosaurus. Plesiosaurus is commonly misconcepted with Elasmosaurus because Elasmosaurus was the longest Plesiosaur. People always get Plesiosaurus and Elasmosaurus mixed up. They always think Plesiosaurus is actually bigger than it is. Plesiosaurus is not as big as Elasmosaurus because Elasmosaurus is the longest Plesiosaur that grew to about 14 years long. This Plesiosaurus was smaller than that, so there is a confusion between the two species, but I do want to see Plesiosaurus in Jurassic World 3. Again, I feel like with the Spinosaurus and Suchomimus, it could have a really awesome, sinister, kind of dark underwater scene. That would be my hopes. You know, we've had the Mosasaurus, which was great for um, Jurassic World, but I feel like for Jurassic World 3, Plesiosaurus needs to make an appearance, whether it's alongside Mosasaurus or just on its own. I feel like Plesiosaurus just has to come into the franchise. As obviously we know, it is probably the last Jurassic movie. I could imagine a really dark, sinister scene with maybe a fisherman out fishing or something, maybe on Loch Ness. That would be so cool if they filmed it there. The fisherman could be on Loch Ness doing some fishing and then there's a Plesiosaurus scene. That would honestly be so incredible. I would absolutely love to see that. That could even be the opening maybe for Jurassic World 3 because it shows that dinosaurs and humans are now coexisting and that would honestly be absolutely incredible. I think that'd be such an awesome way to open up Jurassic World 3. And before we get to number one on my list, I just want to remind you to subscribe down below if you have not already as I'm so close to 3K. At number one on my list, it is what every Jurassic fan wants to see in the next movie. I asked you guys to um, send me in what you, what species you would like to see in Jurassic World 3 and the one that I saw pop up most was, of course, Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus in the Jurassic franchise is such an incredible species. It's so beautiful, it has a really awesome frill and it spits venom. In real life it didn't actually have a frill or spit venom, but in Jurassic Park they wanted to obviously make it scarier and make it more dramatic obviously because it's a movie, so they've done that, but every fan, literally, they want Dilophosaurus to return for the final installment of the Jurassic series. In Jurassic Park, Dilophosaurus was actually depicted as being a small dinosaur. In reality, Dilophosaurus was actually so much bigger than it was depicted in Jurassic Park. It grew from about 6 to 7 meters from head to tail, so it was a lot bigger. So I would love to see a fully grown Dilophosaurus, maybe a herd of them, in Jurassic World 3. As I said, it hasn't made an appearance since Jurassic Park. At the start of Fallen Kingdom, it did make a hoot noise in the bush. But this was just teasing us and I don't know why they did that, it was so unfair I thought because everyone thought oh the Lophosaurus is going to go on screen now and then that was it. It wasn't in the movie, there was a statue of it in Lockwood Manor but that was it. There was no actual Dilophosaurus in the movie, that was so disappointing. So for Jurassic World 3, Dilophosaurus has to return. 
for the final movie. So that is it for today's video. I really hope you did enjoy this. I planned this out over like the last two days and I wrote everything down that I wanted to talk about and why I wanted each species to be in Jurassic World 3. This is obviously a different type of video than what I normally do, but I kind of did enjoy this kind of different style video and I would like to do more of these in the future. So please let me know in the comments if you would like to see more videos like this in the future. If you haven't already, please make sure to like the video down below. That really helps me out. And also, if you haven't already, please do subscribe down below. As I said, that helps me out so much. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do hope you did enjoy this video. Make sure to stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video. Peace out. Rawr.